CBLT Channel 5, Cable 6. I'm June Callwood, and the show is in touch, and we have a variety of topics, as we always do, from women farmers to jazz. <laughs> Joe Scholler is a jazz buff, and he's come to tell us today about Jack Teagarden, who is not one of the better-known names in jazz by me. <laughs> no, and the general public, too, I think, June. Oh, really? Uh, well, first of all, tell me uh, what, what he was noted for. What was he good at? Well, Jack was, um, I guess, the foremost uh, white trombonist in the 1920s. And uh, his style influenced almost every other musician during that period in New York. In the 20s, was jazz mostly black? Well, there was black and white. Uh, the record companies, of course, would only record uh, black bands for certain labels and white bands for other labels. I didn't know that. And they there segregated. was no, no mixing mm -hmm. at, at all. He never played with a black band or had black musicians in his orchestra? Uh, the odd recording session. In, uh, in the 30s, it started to get a little bit better, the whole situation. What kind of people were getting attracted to jazz in the, in the white musician community at that time? And what, why were they, what were they looking at? Why did they like jazz? I'm not sure what you mean, Jim. Well, it's, it seems to me it's got a kind of a soul form. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and I uh, just wondered how white people got into it uh, at that point. Well, I think, I think jazz in the, in the 20s was not really a different music. Um, it was a popular music. Mm -hmm. And it was just accepted by everybody. You know, when you, when you bought a, a dance band record, there was jazz solos on it and jazz mm -hmm. people in the, in the mm -hmm. band. It was just part of the scene at that time. What did uh, Tea Garden bring that was unique? Uh, Jack's style uh, was so much different. He had developed something while he was working in the Southwest in the early 20s. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a style that he just developed on his own. When he got to New York, he was so much different from the other trombonists that he was unique. The other trombone players would be uh, brash and, and not quite as nice as Teagarden. Teagarden would play mellow and high, and he had quite a good blues feeling. Where does that come from, a good, a good feeling? Is it a very creative man? I think th th there were certain musicians that uh, just naturally could feel it inside them and the way they played their music. If they were happy on a certain day, uh, the music would be happy. If they were feeling down, then the music would be the blues. What kind of a background did he come from? Did he have a, could he empathize with, um, with that kind of sorrowful note that he uh, was playing? Yeah, Tea Garden uh, in the Southwest uh, didn't hear too much of what was being recorded. Uh, just local music. Uh, they used to listen to the Indians and stuff like that because they were on the Oklahoma border. He was, was he influenced by that? Yes, he by was. By that sound? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't that interesting? You're going to uh, uh, show us a film clip. What should we watch for in it? Well, this is a film that uh, Tea Garden made with Louis Armstrong in 1951. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's probably Jack's most famous number. He was associated with the tune. It's called Basin Street Blues. And what is it about it that, uh, that what can we learn about his technique or his style from, from this, if we paid attention? Well, Jack uh, also sang as well as played trombone. And uh, his, um, I, I don't know, let's, let's watch it, June. All right, then you so tell maybe me. We'll talk about it after okay. seeing, yeah. We're going to hear Jack T. Garden and what's the thing? Basin Street Blues. Basin Street Blues and uh, on a film clip. We'll be right with it. 
Won't you come along with me? You come along with me. Down the Mississippi. Down the Mississippi. You'll see the place where the folks all meet. Oh, yes. Heaven on earth, they call it Basin Street. Basin Street is the street where dark and light always meet in New Orleans. The land of dreams You'll never know how nice it seems Or just how much it really means That to be Yes, a re Where her welcome streets Welcome me And where I can lose Lose my basin street blues Jack Teagarden uh, with one of his most famous songs, and Joe Scholler uh, is, is here to tell us about him. Uh, he seems a very relaxed man. That was one of uh, Jack's traits, and I think that one of the things that uh, made him so popular with the jazz people. He was totally relaxed. It seemed so effortless when he when he played the trombone or, or sang. He wasn't stoned. No, I don't think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> How did he get along with uh, with musicians? What do they think of him as a man? Uh, most musicians looked up to him, really. Uh, other musicians can get ideas from another musician, no matter whether it be this, them playing the same instrument or not. A piano player can hear something that a trombonist uh, does and, mm -hmm. and kind of work it into what he's doing. And so I know a lot of people uh, took Jack's ideas, and uh, of course, Louis there was probably the most influential musician that ever lived. He just, uh, you know, everybody just copied Louis's style. Did people copy Jack's style in the same way? Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's a trombonist uh, today, a young fellow that's listening to Jack's old recordings and actually learning to play the souls right off the records, note for note. He's still influence, influencing people today. Did he, did he have a popular fo following? Did people, uh, were there cults or, as there were with Louis Armstrong? Yes, I think so. There, there was several clubs in New York. Uh, Eddie Conan, a famous mm -hmm. guitar player, had his own club and uh, Jimmy Ryan's, a uh, couple of clubs in New York still. Was he a operating. big man all his life, or uh, did something happen to his career? Uh, Teagarden um, was always very popular with the jazz people. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, jazz kind I mean, of took successful. a... successful. Well, jazz kind of took a downward dive in the uh, late 50s and early 60s when rock and roll uh, music came out and uh, almost killed a lot of them jazz working musicians. Uh, just nobody wanted to... A jazz band at a local club, they, they wanted rock and roll. He suffered in that? Yes, uh, they all did. Yeah. Oh. What was the highlight of his career? What are the big things for him? Well, just around that time, um, there was a lot of uh, jazz musicians being sent uh, abroad for goodwill tours for the mm -hmm. U.S. And uh, Jack traveled in the Far East for four months. Louis Armstrong was in Africa, that kind oh, of thing? Yeah, I guess, well, Louis was known as the U.S. Uh, goodwill ambassador. There's no question about that. Was, was Jack a, a person who had a, a congenial way of behaving with, uh, with the audience the way Louis did? So you, you liked him on sight? Yeah, he was, he was always very friendly, but he didn't speak uh, as much as Louis did. Louis, Louis was a natural, you know, but uh, Teagarden usually would introduce uh, his tunes and try and tell a little history of the music because by the time, uh, you know, 1958 had come along, he'd been playing for 40, 45 years, and he, he wanted to give people an idea of what had 
gone before. What attracts you to him? I started in listening to jazz on the radio, I guess, uh, in the late 50s. And uh, just went out to buy some records. And Tea Garden was one of the first people I'd heard on record. And uh, I liked it so much, I bought another one. And I just haven't stopped for 15 years. When you go around in your gang, who do you know who do you know who's knows who you're talking about? Yeah, well, it's, it's easier, of course, to get along with uh, the jazz-oriented people. We'll go down to the, uh, the club downtown. And, you know, everybody's on the same level with you. They all so, know, so yeah. Jack and Jack. What happened to Tea Garden? Well, this during the uh, early '60s, the, his bookings got less and less, and uh, his health started to suffer. He wasn't making a great deal of money, and uh, he just kind of faded away. He died in New Orleans in January 1964. Was he in despair over this? How I did think he it take was. It? Yeah, he was. He was uh, getting in trouble financially, and uh, what's he, What's the next film clip we're going to have? You brought another one, too. Yeah, this is something that he did with his own uh, big band in 1944. It's uh, an extremely rare film. We've just found it in 1975. And it, uh, it just hadn't surfaced since the day it was made. Uh, it's, uh, and what's the name of it? The uh, tune title is The Blues. And it's a thing Teagarden wrote himself. All right. And, uh, Let's it's roll it. And, and uh, does he sing in this one? Yes, he does. Yeah. Well, Jack T. Garden with the blues in its 1944 piece of film that's just been found out of some archive somewhere. <laughs> Well, thanks to Joe Showell for bringing us Jack Teagarden and that lovely piece of film. Thanks, Joe. And we'll be back in two minutes.